So we're going at this with all the energy as if it were our personal brothers. Because you know what? It is somebody's brother. And we care about that. And we want to solve it. We want to be the voice for those young men who lost their voice on Friday night when their life was snuffed out by some nasty, evil person or persons. And that's what they are. They're nasty, evil, ugly, mean, murdering people. That's Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd uh, speaking, talking about the $30,000 reward. Horrific case down in Polk County. You had three men who were friends, young men who were friends, who decided uh, they were going to go fishing at night, do some catfishing at a, at a local lake, and they were murdered, all three of them, their lives taken. And the, the sheriff spoke about uh, what happened that night, including a phone call from the, uh, one of the men's father who had to call 911 when he found out what was going on. Take a listen. So on this Friday evening, these guys, as they do often because they are three buddies just this tight, or f going to fish. We receive a frantic 911 call. When we respond, we ultimately talk to the dad. And dad's home in bed asleep. He knows that his son's going down there to fish with his buddies. He receives a night, uh, an emergency call from his son, and all he can make out is help. Well, dad jumps out of bed, dresses, and runs to the area as quickly as he can, where he encounters his son's truck parked in the road and parallel with and pointed in the other direction so that they would be talking driver's door to driver's door is the car of Kevin and Brandon or the truck of Kevin and Brandon. And, and they're all shot up. It's a massacre. He runs to his son's side and he and his son are there in, in, in an intimate moment with his son actively dying and his son is saying some things to him which obviously we're not releasing to the public at this point in time and that's maybe too bad for the suspects of the murder and good for the investigation. Then he realizes he doesn't have a cell phone and he jumps in his car and he runs back to the community of Sunray, which is just about five or ten minutes away, to a convenience store that once again he knows the folks, they know him. 911 is called. The 17 year old daughter of the lady working in the convenience store goes back to the scene. And that's where dad now finds his son who is dying is deceased. Horrific, horrific case, and, and really doesn't make much sense, but it seems like there may be some clues here. Let's bring in uh, Court TV anchor Ted Rollins, who's been uh, looking into this uh, today. Ted, do we have any indication on motive, why someone would take the lives of these three buddies who are just going out doing some catfishing? No. Um, Sheriff Judd, who obviously you see there, very charismatic and, and really feels uh, this case. He wants this solved, and he even said that, you know, he's seen a lot of these, but nothing like this. Uh, there's nothing there. It, it it's took place basically on a dirt clay road that went out to a couple lakes um, that is rural, rural, rural. I mean, you wouldn't be out there if you weren't a local or unless you got lost. So, there's some speculation. All right, maybe this is a, maybe these kids were into drugs or something that nobody knew about. This is in the community of Frost Proof, which is about 90 minutes east of Tampa Bay. Sheriff Judd said, no, at this point, there's nothing that leads them to believe that there is any sort of a drug deal gone bad or um, any sort of a domestic issue. Take a listen. This does not look like a drug deal gone bad. We have zero evidence of that. It does not appear to be a domestic event. We don't know the reason at this stage of the investigation. Was it something as simple 
as the two guys or the three guys in the two vehicles because Damien was in a red truck and Brandon and Kevin were in a white truck that they pulled up side by side and talked about their fishing strategy and blocked the road and made somebody mad? Or did somebody follow Damien down there and shoot him, which is one of our theories? And at that time, Kevin and Brandon drive up, and it's, my goodness, they've shot and killed one, so they shoot and kill the witnesses. We just don't know. It's speculation at this point. But three people died, three very close friends, doing what millions of people did across this country this weekend, and that's fishing with friends and enjoying their time away from work. That's why we need help. Frostproof is a safe community, and it has shaken Frostproof to its very core. That help he's talking about, uh, part of it, they, they are issuing a reward. Initially, there was a $15,000 reward, uh, started at five, jumped to 15, and then uh, he's already up to 30,000 within a day. They really want the public's help here. It sounds like they have information because father was able to talk to son, Brandon Rollins, before he died, was able to say something to his father. But it's clear that there isn't enough there at this point. Obviously, there's been no arrests. The sheriff, though, says he wants to make an arrest sooner than later in this case. There's a lot of, uh, there, there's a, a lot of pressure to solve this. 30,000, I mean, out of the box, that's a lot of, that's a lot of money for, for a, a reward. Do they believe whoever did this is a danger and, and might do this again, might kill someone else down in that neighborhood? Well, he put it this way, is that anybody who's killed three people, you better not make them mad. They don't think that there's a homicidal maniac out just killing for sport. Um, however, obviously, uh, someone who's got three homicides under their belt is a inherent danger. Um, and Sheriff Grady says we got to solve this. Take a listen. What's more wholesome than going fishing? Three buddies going fishing, we can all identify with that. And then being shot down in the middle of the road during the nighttime hours. We've got to bring these people to justice. It's important to understand that they've killed three people. They have nothing to lose at this point. We don't believe have zero evidence to believe that they're out looking for people to kill. But we also know that for whatever reason that somebody else crosses their paths and makes them mad, they have nothing more to lose. So it's important that we as a community all work together to make sure we get those folks locked up sooner rather than later. And Sheriff Judd was asked, does, is he convinced that it was more than one person? He said, no, I don't know for sure, but the way the evidence is laid out there, the amount of gunfire, they believe, the investigators initially at least, that there were more than one um, uh, gunman in, in this situation. And uh, they're looking for any clues. And of course, somebody knows something. Absolutely. I, I can't imagine road rage there in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere. 